lifting up the battery or trying to. This sucker is heavy. Oh, no, I still have to remove it. Uh, give me the, the give. Oh, I guess I got it. Watch oh, this big. This battery is heavier than, than a mom tree. Than a king size bed. <laughs> you see me, Kevin? <laughs> Damn. Oh, my God. Battery out. Let's take it to advance and get it tested and and or replaced. All right, so we're outside advanced auto parts. Um, we're gonna get the battery tested, see if we need a, a new, need to replace it or it can be charged. Here we go. See if I can lift it with one hand. Uh, yes, I can. I'm very strong. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's an AGM battery. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This needs a charge. Yeah, Perfect. I will do the charge. How long does it normally take? Um, I'm ask my, I'm ask my coworker. Okay. So it needed to be charged and fully tested to see if it's going to hold the charge. And if it holds the charge, that means the battery is good. I was good about taking the leads um, or the connectors off the battery when the car was not in use, but it still ran down is what it is. Um, so right now it's they say the full might take a few maybe a couple hours so they took my information and I'll come back they'll call me when it is ready so I'm gonna go run some other errands and be back to pick up the battery the results of the battery test yesterday was not good so I had to purchase a new one yep I had to spend 250 something dollars for a new diehard AGM. All right, so we're gonna drop that in today and see what is our next step. Um, I do believe that the siren will go off uh, because the siren is um, was going off when the battery was low. So I'm hoping that once the new battery goes in, the siren will stop. It's so lonely. It's the first time I've been in the garage and Morenita is no longer here. That is a wow factor for me. Um, since we've never had this garage without having two cars in here. So, yeah. R.I.P. It's not even R.I.P. Is it like rest in lot? Rest in car lot? I don't know. R.I.C. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's get to throwing in the HG AGM battery and see how we go from there. All right, let's clear the pot. Right All right, so right inside. Woo! This battery is heavy. For two years straight to the face Champagne belly bubble still won't go away Last year my best man hit a stain with bad face Now he's got a LB on the water's cold case I wake up with pain some time and never go away Wonder why I balance to my knees when I pray In my city gritty gotta keep it on your waist Oh you might be Here goes the siren Is in. All right, let's see if she fires up. All right, so she fires up. Now I just need to figure out how to solve the siren if it's replacing it or if there's something that I'm, I'm actually missing because I've replaced it before. Now, I just need to figure out how to solve it permanently without bypassing the siren. Um, yeah, let's see. So if you're new to the channel, 
this series is going to be about the restoration of the B6, aka Scarlet, um, which is a 2004 A4 Quattro and six speed manual. All right, six speed manual, 1.8T, as you saw under the hood, 1.8T turbo. Um, so we're just gonna solve this issue now with the siren. All right, let's walk around and identify the pieces of this B6 that needs repairing. One, the tail light plate lights. So one of these actually work, this one doesn't. So I actually started that project uh, earlier this summer and this is as far as I got to trying to figure out how to pull this off. It's really just yanking it off, but I feel like when I'm yanking it, it's gonna break. Speaker cover in the driver, in the passenger rear side. As you can see, it got broken in. Wheels, need to scrape off the plastic dip off of it. It's all dried on there, but I need to clean it up, get back to its natural color, which is a gunmetal finish on all four wheels. And then we have some rust spots developing there and the paint chip from here from our fender replacement. I don't think the paint job was the best. Um, the headlight bracket was broken. So we have a, a repair kit piece on there, but however, headlight dip dipping signal keeps going off. Also, one of these headlights, uh, HID bulbs is actually dying out. It's moving from white to a pink and very dim. Glove box, very common issue with these cars. Glove box broken, as you can see there. So I have to figure out how to repair that hinge or buy a new glove box, which will be the same situation. And I have to kind of uh, figure out how to not let it happen again. Also the driver's seat starting to rip. So that's another restoration. And you can see in the rear here, the headliner is dipping, folding and ripping. So the adhesive has worn off and you can see that it's now drooping. This here is, was damaged. As you can see, the grills aren't sitting in place and the actual bumper here is damaged. And a lot of these grills have been screwed in and you can see it doesn't line up here. And there is another rust and bend to the fender. On this side, I'm missing one of the fender grills. I mean, the uh, rear veil, the front valence grills. And on this side, you can see it also not lined up. Plus it also pops out on a regular basis, which sort of annoys me a bit. Hood or bonnet was damaged uh, with this front here. And as you can see, the headlight is even receded and the bumper is slightly bent and the paint is chipping away right there. The moonroof sometimes works and does not work. So, so I've actually changed this like three times from the junkyard, so I, I feel like the motor is probably going or something else. There we go. So right now it's responding, but sometimes it does not. And um, for now, I guess it is lower on the priority list. It works sometimes, majority of the time, but when it doesn't, it annoys me. In the center console, the card holder, this piece falls off. So I might have to find another um, card holder piece because the clip, even though it's clipped on, it keeps falling off. So maybe gluing it, maybe would resolve that, but for now, that is one of my issues. And I believe this one is fine, but this needs cleaning. As you can see, once it opens up, the cup holder piece isn't popping open. So it needs cleaning. So I'll get to that as well. Well, you can see that there's clear coat, clear coat being pulled up or lifting here. It's flaking off. So that's another thing I'd have to address. The center consoles, as you can see them, the buttons are rubbing off and exposing the 
translucent area that reflects the light. Also on the cup holder and on the hazard, slowly lifting. One final issue, it's very hard to replicate, but it normally happens during the summer, is that the system during the heat, the audio system actually goes in and out. Um, it just stops or lowers the volume and it just sounds weird. I believe maybe the system overheats and just shuts off or lowers the audio randomly and muffles the audio as well. And that issue with the audio is lowering the priorities, has the connection in the glove box. I might reroute that cable to be somewhere in the center console so it's easily accessible and maybe get a new car, um, car radio. Maybe one that's wireless CarPlay. We'll see. We also have paint chip here and there and there. Some another one right here. This wasn't the best paint job from the insurance company. We have some paint flaking right here. And I need to get this wheel fixed. As you can see it's low and very low. I also have to get this oil or oil debris stuff off. I've been trying to scrape it off little by little without scratching the paint, but I don't know how I'm gonna remove the rest of it. And we also have some more paint chips at the top of the car here. Yep. I'm missing a washer cap here to cover the wiper blade. And I'm missing the rain tray that covers the battery. I have some oil probably coming back into the header. Um, so this is at the actuator for the throttle body. So I gotta get address that. Oh, that's a lot of oil right here. Where's that oil coming from? Engine cover. Engine cover is broken. See that break? All right, a little bit of oil splatter. My coil pack seem clean with the spacers, and that is the roundup of all the repairs that needed that is needed for the B6. Um, above, above everything else seems to be fine. So let the restoration begin. Now I'm just disconnecting the siren. Um, as you can see, it's currently disconnected. And we're gonna test to see if the siren shouldn't go off. And we're gonna see if there are any, um, maybe any alerts or any uh, warning lights that go off. So let's see. It doesn't beep, but the flashers still go off and I have, to think, I have to probably find a solution for that. Uh, seems like it might be one of those things where you go down a rabbit hole. So we got the flashers to stop flashing. Um, so I connected the old um, siren, um, let the chirping go off and then dis disconnected it. Um, and so it resolved itself. Um, so no more flashers, the doors are open. So we have the keys. And let's lock that door. Doors are locked. Well, partially locked. Um, and the trunk is still open. So I'm gonna unlock all the doors, close them. That's locked. The lights flash when you unlock, but not when you lock but you can hear the actuators actually going off. Um, I can 
So I pulled apart the trunk, disconnected the siren, and that's what I'm working with right now. I'm just gonna reassemble the trunk and um, go from there. If you wanna see how I got to the siren, I'll link that video in the top right hand corner. Like right here. Perfect example. I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but if you look at the reflection on the truck, you can see that the right light, the passenger light is dim. It's going um, pink or off color. And so you see that is white and that is not white. 